Congressman Fred Grandy and his lovely bride, as you know, uh, are with us on a weekly basis. We really dig this. I, I, I do, anyway. Uh, Wednesdays, uh, right around this time, it's always good to welcome him in. These are the, uh, the two people in America who continue to expose the threat of uh, radical Islam, uh, Islamofascism, and the rest of it. They also point out on a regular basis, you know, there are a lot of good, decent, moderate people who happen to practice that faith uh, that are being pushed to the side as well. Uh, Fred and or Mrs. Fred, good morning. Good, good morning, morning, Jeff. How are, how are you doing? We're ready to go. We're ready to go, Jeff. The, uh, uh, the report this morning, as usual, is in two parts. Uh, yes. First, we have a report on an old organization that is up to some new tricks, and then I will follow with a report on a new organization that is using the same old tricks, mm-hmm. both of them having to do with our favorite creeping Sharia. All right. All right. So okay. we get to start with Mrs. Fred. Uh, this has got to be about our friends in the Muslim Brotherhood. Of course. You bet yeah, it is. Yeah, you bet it is. Yep. You're, here, here it goes. Where is the outrage? That's what I want to know. Where is the mm-hmm. outrage in our country? Last week, a few prominent members of the Muslim Brotherhood traveled from Egypt for high-level meetings at the White House and the State Department. I'm sure you heard about that. Absolutely. Because, you know, our mainstream media thinks this is just great that the brothers are kind of like the Boy Scouts with their (laughs) freedom and justice party that is poised to run Egypt and implement Sharia law, Yep. all thanks to this so-called Arab Spring and, of course, to our president who, as you recall, helped give Egyptian President Mubarak the boot. Right. But back to those meetings. At the White House, and the State Department with the Muslim Brotherhood and its singular goal since 1928 to establish global Islam through jihad and martyrdom. You know, you can find their formal plan to Islamize the United States in federal court documents, Jeff. You know that. We've Mm -hmm. talked about that. Mm -hmm. But never mind. It seems Obama really likes these guys, the Muslim Brotherhood. The State Department must think they're swell, Because I guess that's why the brothers who traveled from Egypt last week got very special treatment by our customs officials. According to this is really a shocking report by the Investigative Project on Terrorism. Mm -hmm. Our State Department purposely broke with normal procedures when it ordered the U.S. Customs and Border Protection not not to conduct a secondary inspection on the Muslim Brotherhood delegation from Egypt when they arrived at JFK. Apparently, you know, this extra inspection is standard operating procedure when a foreign visitor has been tied to criminal or terrorist activities. And the added inspection means just going through the visitor's bag, viewing computer contents and other electronic devices to search for illicit activity. And, you know, since the Muslim Brotherhood spawned Hamas (laughs) and is considered the parent of all Sunni terrorists and Palestinian Islamic Jihad, wouldn't you think that this alone would trigger extra scrutiny for the incoming Brotherhood delegation? Well, normally it would, but for these Muslim brothers... Even the standard inspection mandated for foreigners arriving from Egypt and inspection in place since 9-11, even that was suspended. So they, they all got a big green light, and one of them, wow. the guy's name is Abdul Magud Dardri. He was implicated in a U.S. child pornography investigation oh. some time ago. This guy, he got waved right through customs with the rest of them. Welcome to the USA, bros, child porn, <laughs> terrorism, things we most admire, right, in our visitors, never mind our own security, because, you know, the State Department trusts these guys, wow. and that's what counts. I just wow. have a short footnote here. This sounds like the kind of diplomatic courtesy I got when I was traveling with the love boat back in the 80s. <laughs> <laughs> Waved right through customs. We could have had we could have had wheelbarrows of cocaine, and they would have allowed us. Oh, but you didn't. I see. No, I gosh. Let's let's note for the record. Let the record show, Your Honor. Okay. Wow. Wow, it's well, just amazing. I, I'd love to say that I'm surprised. I'm not. And I know, Fred, you've got sort of a, a, like you said, a new group, but they're using the same old tactics now. Well, what we're talking about here is, I, of course, we talk about care and we talk about uh, the Islamic Society of North America. And last week we were talking about the Islamic Circle of North America. Yep. Do you know what AMJA is? A-M-J-A. Uh, I don't, but I have a feeling in about three seconds I will. You will. It is the Assembly of Muslim Jurists of America, a relatively new group, started, I believe, in in 2002. Uh, And, of course, if you're hearing Muslim jurists, you say, all right, these are guys who are involved in the legal profession in the United States. Well, that is, of course, the American translation. But if you go back 
and find the Arabic translation. Here's what it really means. The Association of Legal Specialists in Sharia Law in America. Now, they don't necessarily want you to know this, but AMJA is essentially a group of legal scholars who advise on Sharia to lawyers and judges and jurors who are Muslim in the United States. And here's an interesting connection, Jeff. One of their members is a guy named Zulfikar Ali Shah, who also happens to be a former past president of ICNA. And, of course, this is a guy who was president of the Kind Hearts Charity in 2005, whose assets were frozen by the Treasury for funneling funds to Hamas. So he's one of the resident scholars. But here's, here's what they essentially talk about. They say that this is essentially a group that advises Muslims living in America to understand the Sharia in such a manner as to rule by it in every case brought before him. But And this is the important part. He must also in his heart hate the man-made law. Wow. So what we're essentially seeing now is a group of legal scholars who are advising people in the legal professions or amateurs like jurors mm-hmm. to acknowledge that the American system is an infidel system and they can tolerate it, but they must always, always hate it. Wow. Fred, Mrs. Fred, great to have you with us as always. Congressman Fred Grandy, his lovely bride, uh, we call her Mrs. Fred because she wants to be called Mrs. Fred. They're, they're great folks. And I'm telling you, two people uh, with unbelievable courage, tremendous insight, uh, this is now their passion. Uh, they continue to uh, research and report. They're the only people I know who are doing this on the uh, the real threat of uh, radical Islam. It's just tremendous stuff. I appreciate them being here.